Hey, this is Caio from EssentialDeveloper.com. Today we're going to be writing tests for our Compose View controllers using storyboards. The goal for this video is to show you ways how you can test these composed view controllers using storyboards. Because if you remember last time, things were getting a little bit messy by using the segue identifiers because they are strings. So the test can give us more safeties while using storyboards. So let's have a look what we had here last time. And here, one of the examples of the identifiers used as strings. That's how storyboards work. So we need to protect ourselves from these fragile API. And as I said before, there are frameworks that will find all these identifiers for you in the storyboards and create constants. They will give you some compiler time safeties, but you can still cannot guarantee that your storyboards are all set up correctly. So we're gonna fix all those problems with tests. Another example here, we have the multiplayer score view controller. And this one composes two score view controllers while the single player view controller composes just one. And the player score view controller just composes views. Great. And the player one storyboard sets up the layout for the player score view controller. And we can check here the class. And the player two storyboard also sets up a player score view controller layout that is different from the player one. But they share the same class. So let's start here. Let me have a look at my tests. Well, Xcode generated this test for me, but I don't want it. So I'm going to remove it and I'm going to create a new file. Player score view controller storyboard tests. No, thank you. Okay. So let's start with the first storyboard. Uh, let's create a test that the player one storyboard initial view controller is player score view controller. Okay, so we can create our storyboard with name player one. I don't need a bundle here. Now we can create our assertion that our storyboard view controller is player score view controller. And of course we need to import our main target as testable, so we have access to internal types. Great. Let's run the tests. And it passes. And it passes, but I would like to see a failing test just to be sure that this is actually doing the work. So what I can do quickly is to just remove this class from here. And also remove the outlets. And let's run this again. And it fails. Great. So this is tested. Let's put the class back, run the test again, and they pass. Fantastic. So next, what else do we have here? Well, we have the name label and the score label, and they are also set up in the storyboard, so we need to test that. This is private, so let's test this through the name and score computer virus. So test, the same, player one, storyboard, say name, is setable. Okay, so here we can do the same thing. We get a storyboard or a view controller that will be player score view controller. Great. Other thing we have to do is to load the view. So let's force the view to load. And now I can set my name to be a name. And let's assert equal we see dot name should be a name. Let's run this. And it fails. Great. And right now, the simplest thing we can do to make this pass is actually to just not make this a computer var and be actually a property that stores a value. So if I run this now, it's gonna pass. Yeah, it passed, but that's not actually what I want. I don't want to store a property. I want to update my label. So let's revert this and actually what we can do is just to make this getter accessible and we keep the setter private by using private set. Great. I should have a filling test seal. There it is. And to make this pass, we are going to use instead of 
dot name here. We're going to use label dot text. So now let's go back to the storyboard and connect our outlet to the name. Let's run. Nice. So I think we should rename this test. Why don't we call it name setter updates name label. Okay, that's a better name. Next is the score setter. That's very similar. Let's just change a little bit. And it works. Great. Let's do some refactoring. Why don't we move this since all the tests need a storyboard? What else? We have some duplication here. So why don't we create a, a helper section? And let's add a make player score view controller. And here we can return a view controller with a view loaded. Great. Now this can be changed. Okay, that's much cleaner. Let's run and see if they still pass. Great, I don't need this extra line. What about player two storyboard? We're gonna have to duplicate a lot of things. So let's refactor this before we start the player two as well. Why don't we create a function to make player one storyboard? And this can return my storyboard. I can replace this here. I can replace this here. Everything still works. But now I need to pass a storyboard to this function. Otherwise, I'm gonna to have to duplicate this function. So I'm going to pass a storyboard. Great. And I can use it here. So what I have to do now is to pass a storyboard. Cool. Okay. Let's now create a mark here to separate player one storyboard. And we can also have our player two storyboard tests. Let's make sure the test also fails if I remove the class and the outlets. And you see, that's why we have to write the test first. Otherwise, you don't have this guarantee and you have more work to make sure that your tests are correct. There it is, we have a crash, so we can go back and set a class. Now just two failing tests and it's for the name label and the score label. All right, so this is done, let's commit. For the next example, let's use the single player view controller. And this is composing one player view controller. So let's create a test file. Okay, so our first test should be just like the other. Single player game storyboard initial view controller is single player view controller. Great. Let's create our storyboard. The name is single player game. No bundle. And let's make sure storyboard initial view controller is a single player view controller. And again, I have to import our main target as testable so we can have access to the types. Great. Run this again. Great, it works. But again, just to have some safeties here, it's better to remove the class. And that's why we should write tests first. Great, it fails so we can put it back and we know that this test is covering this case. Okay, but to carry on now, I wanna test that this setup is correct. And the way to do it would be to write the test first. So I'm gonna remove this code. 
I want to see a failing test first, as it should be. So the next test will be single player game storyboard sets up player for single player view controller. Great. So same thing here, we're going to need a storyboard, so I'm going to move it to the class scope. Here I can get my view controller. That should be the initial view controller as a single player view controller. Great. Let's load the view. And let's make sure the view controller player is not nil. And we should see a failing test right away. And there it is. Great. Let me roll back this and it should pass now. And it does. Great. So another thing we can do here is to put back the first implementation we had by using the child view controllers, just to make sure that our tests are flexible enough to allow us to have different implementations for this view controller. So I'm going to remove this private set and this is going to be a computed var. So I can use the child view controllers and I can flat map, I can cast as a player view controller and get the first one. I can remove this implementation, run the tests and it should pass. And it does which means that we can implement these in different ways and still have the test covering this behavior. So that's very powerful. We don't want the test to be very tied to segues or a specific way of doing something. We want to allow it to change easily without breaking the tests. And we just proved it, it works, but there's more. I have another implementation idea for this. I really don't like that this class knows to get the player from the segue or to extract it from the child view controller, which means that this class knows too much. He knows about the storyboard, he knows about the segues, or he knows about the child view controller. Somehow, implicitly, this knowledge of where this view controller is coming from is leaking to the implementation of this class. And if we want it to be a little bit more flexible, we can separate the configuration that will be extracting the player from this class. And I want to show you how we can do it. And we have tests to make sure that our changes didn't break the functionality. So what I want to do here is I want to create a single player view controller configurator. Actually, let's call it single player view controller storyboard configurator, which means that this is the class that knows about storyboards and it's going to configure the view controller to be ready and still allows it to have different implementations. Like if you want to use nibs, we can have a nib configurator, or if you want to do everything in code, you can have a custom configurator. Let's create our final class, storyboard configurator. Since it's going to be injected in the storyboard, it needs to be a subclass of NS object because it uses the key value APIs. So what I want here is an IB outlet. We can make this private weak var. Let's call this player and it's a UI view controller. Let's import UI kit. Okay. So now in our single player view controller, I'm going to remove this code. And this is gonna be the entire class. This value will be set by property injection. So let's go back to the storyboard. We have our scene here with the reference to the player one storyboard. So what we can do is we can add an object type to the player one scene, and we can use our new class view controller storyboard configurator and set the player property to reference the player one view controller that is part of this storyboard reference. So now we can go back to the code. In our configurator, we can add a did set callback. And right now let's just add a breakpoint. And we are getting here. So how does this work? In the storyboard, every time we instantiate the initial view controller, the view is not loaded yet. So the player child view controller, it's not created right away. As soon as the view load, all the dependencies are loaded with it. So the player view controller will be instantiated from the storyboard that is referenced here. And all the objects added to this scene will be also created and the outlets will be set up. So back to the code, when the player view controller is created, the parent is already created, but it's not yet set. So we can add an observer. Observation is player dot observe a key path, the key path will be dot parent. And here we're gonna have our player and the changes. And as soon as the parent is set, we can configure it. And how can we do it? Well, that's easy. We can get the single player 
controller as the player parent as single player view controller. And if the type match, what we can do is to just set the player to be the player. That's an E flat. And we need to hold a strong reference to the observation, otherwise it goes away as soon as it de init. So let's create here our observation. And now we are holding a strong reference to it. Let's run again. And it passes. And if you have a look again at the class, there is no binding code anymore. There is no extracting code. There is no segue code anymore in the view controller. Everything is separated, which gives you much more flexibility. And I just show you three different implementations for that with the same tests, which means that the test is not fragile. That's what we're looking for. Another thing we notice is that to make sure that your tests are covering all the cases, we have to see a failing test. And that's why we have to write the test for us. So it's very important. Otherwise, we are going to have extra steps, extra work. And it's going to take longer. So writing your test for us is much faster. And our tests here are very clean, simple, and very powerful, very flexible. And you can do the same thing for all the other view controllers. But it's up to you. If you prefer to use segways, that's fine. Computer virus with child view controllers, that's fine as well. If you want to abstract that into a configurator, you can use storyboards to have these dependencies tied together by using the object type in the storyboard interface. Remember, composition is a great tool to separate complexity in your apps and have reusable code. Test first is much faster than writing the test afterwards. And as long as you have flexible tests, you are free to change it as your requirements change as well. So for next videos, we're going to show different ways of doing composition with just code without storyboards. And maybe that's going to work better for you. Or maybe you prefer storyboards, but it's nice to have different ways of doing things. So for different problems, you can find an optimal solution. So that's it for this video. I hope you learned something today and I hope you share this with others. Don't forget to watch our series on test-driven development and modular design. You're going to learn a lot about composition in there and a lot about testing because it just requires practice. All right, I hope you enjoyed this video. Don't forget to subscribe. Thanks for watching. Bye.